media sports family of networks. The highest standard in sports television, including the CBS Sports Network, Showtime Sports, CBSSports.com, and the CBS Sports Radio Network. The best in sports online, on radio, and on the air. CBS Sports. Expect it here. Tonight, eight teams take the floor. Seven are former champions. Louisville, Oregon, Kansas. And Kansas come back for the history book. Michigan, Duke. Duke is the king of the dance. Michigan State, Florida. Florida, back to back. And then there's these guys. Not your ordinary Cinderella. Bring on the Gators! We're going to Dallas! When they made this slipper, they shattered the mold. The madness continues. Watch the sledgehammer! What's it up? the great city here the circle city once again playing host to another big event coming inside Lucas Oil Stadium for the Midwest Regional first up it'll be Oregon against the number one overall seed of this tournament the Louisville Cardinals and then later tonight a clash of the Titans Michigan State and Duke Izzo and Krzyzewski on this very floor hello friends Jim Nance along with Clark Kellogg gonna be a great night of basketball action here in the chase for the trophy and by the way Oregon's been carrying with them during the tournament the 1939 championship trophy. They won the very first, and there is the one next to it that will be given away in 10 days at the Georgia Dome, the 2013 championship trophy. Now, many people think that will eventually belong to Louisville, but both of these teams have a shot. We talk about the Cardinals. We talk about Smith. We talk about Siva with their guards, but you want to talk about the big man. I want to take the isolated cam down inside to Gorgie Zhang. He has yet to miss a shot in two tournament games. We're going to show you his vastly improved mid-range jump shot in the pick and roll action. Silent screen. Siva going to engage the big, which allows Gorgie to step into that mid-range jumper. He's a guy offensively that doesn't get enough credit. And how about Oregon? Does Oregon get enough credit? Obviously under as a 12 seed. Just who are these Ducks? Well, they won the Pac-12 tournament just two weeks ago. There's Johnny Lloyd, who was the outstanding player in the Pac-12 tournament, knocking out UCLA in the final. And then they've got a guard to watch out for tonight. Dominic Gardis, when he's been healthy, 23 and 4. And in this this tournament again as a 12 they have knocked off a five in Oklahoma State and a four in St. Louis winning both games by double digits now what about them tonight I tell you what these ducks are for real Jim they are mirror images to Louisville in style of play changing defensive changing defenses attacking at both ends of the floor the key is going to be can they withstand the pressure for 40 minutes because they're a little younger and smaller in the backcourt I think they can particularly if the other ball handlers make plays and knock down some shots sweet 16 action is coming up from Indianapolis on the road to the final four and we'll have Oregon and Louisville coming up on CBS back in Indianapolis for the Midwest Regional there is Dana Altman third year on the bench for Oregon 20 win seasons each of his first three years and here are the starting lineups a senior front court for Oregon a freshman backcourt and on the Louisville side again watch for Russ Smith and Peyton Siva they have for so many turnovers all year long and what a start they've had in this NCAA tournament for head coach Rick Pitino who has never lost in the sweet 16 round as a coach 10 and oh all time by a margin of over 20 points per victory. The officials are Eads, Dorsey and Daly, Jim Nance, Clark Kellogg and Tracy Wolfson on the site here of the 2010 Final Four and once again we'll play host in 15 to the Final Four gathering. Meanwhile we have four teams here in Indianapolis at the regional with their sights set on Atlanta for next week's Final Four. Here we go and it's Louisville with the first possession and Siva 
coming off his great performance at the Big East tournament and a missed lay-in. Great pass, but Bahannon couldn't finish. Dotson will fire it up, and nothing but air there as that was quickly defended. This game is going to be played at a rapid-fire pace, Jim. Both teams love to play downhill. Don't expect Oregon to back it out at all. They're going to look to attack at every opportunity. They'll full-court press some, and they'll also mix defenses, man and zone. Dotson, he gets the first two attempts. Fails to hit either one. Smith driving and off the glass for two. Russ Smith averaging 25 a game in the first two NCAA tournaments. And he has been terrific, Jim. 12 of 20 from two-point land, 5 of 11 from three land. Pass and fouled on the way up. Woods was fouled. Nice pass, though, by Kazimi. Here comes Russ Smith right at you, folks. He's so good at putting pressure on the defense by attacking the rim. Fearless in getting to the rim, and he's got the ability to finish with both hands. Went left hand there. And right away, you saw Oregon, Jim, come right back at Louisville and attack. Blackshear on the foul, and one more free throw coming for the 6'11 senior Tony Woods, who started his collegiate career at Wake Forest. Very decorated recruit out of Rome, Georgia. And he gets one of two for the first point for the Ducks. Full court pressure here by Oregon. Just what we expected, Jim. They're not going to sit back on their heels. The Ducks want to quack the Cardinals into turnovers and miss shots. There's a three-pointer off the mark, but the put back by Chang and a foul. And a foul call is on Singler. Well, quick shots against the spread out defense will leave the backboard open. And Zhang, one of the best offensive rebounders in the country, just out muscles Singler there, and he'll have a chance for three. They took it away from Singler, but the foul was on Kazimi and fails to finish off the three point play. And here come the 28 and 8 Ducks. He won five straight games coming into this one, three against ranked opponents. And that's going to stay Oregon basketball. Oregon has committed 36 turnovers in its first two tournament games, Jim. They've been able to overcome 18 turnovers a game by making half of their three-pointers 16 of 32 and out-rebounding their opponents by 12 a game. Can't afford the turnovers, certainly the live ball carelessness against this Louisville Cardinals team. Louisville so good at forcing turnovers, and there is one committed by Woods on the traveling call. I like the aggressiveness, but Woods too far away from the goal to be putting it on the floor and turning his back. He needs to catch that ball mid post, and then he'll have a chance to go into that move without much defensive help. Bounce pass to Blackshear as Smith found him. 6 1 Louisville. This is where Smith is so good defending the ball, and he can take it right off the ball handler many times. Here's Singler, senior all Pac-10 performer is Singler. His brother won a national championship on this floor with Duke in 2010. And now with five to shoot, Dotson. It's a back to Artis who must hurry, gets the screen. He doesn't know it. And not Never knew it. Never knew it, Jim. And you just saw Dana Altman say, no the shot clock. Part of the youth of this backcourt. Both are freshmen, Dotson and Artis. Back-to-back -back turnovers, and you don't want to allow Louisville to create that type of scenario. Zone defense here by the Ducks, Jim. As Louisville sets up its half-court offense, Chang trying to set a pick for Siva. And now the Cardinals under 10 to shoot. Smith weaves right between two defenders, has it knocked out of his hands by Artis. Nice play by the freshman out of San Francisco. Fine single in the corner with the three, no. Slides off the rim, bounces outside to Siva. He's looking up ahead. What a bounce pass it is for the dunk. Siva with a brilliant bounce pass to Bahannon for two. Kazimi off the glass. 
pass, and Oregon has its first field goal. Smith spinning. Into the lane. Chang. And he's got two more. Just at we, what we expected, Jim. Pedal to the metal basketball both ways. Oregon needs to be able to knock down the good shots it gets. Louisville attacking the paint. There you see the numbers right there. 10-2 points in the paint. Louisville. Over the top to Kazemi, and he is held by Siba. Follow the games anywhere you go with NCAA March Madness Live. Download the app for your iPhone, iPad, or select Android devices by visiting NCAA.com slash March Madness. And now the Ducks will bring in a very good substitution group, including Carlos Emery and Jonathan Lloyd. And Lloyd will inbound. He again was the tournament MVP in the Pac-12 tournament. Here's Singler baseliner, yes. Nicely done. Waverly Austin on the floor as well, Jim, for Oregon. Carlos Emery, folks, keep an eye on him. He's been an eco booster off the bench for Oregon, particularly in this tournament. 13 points a game is what he's averaged in the tournament so far. And we're seeing the Cardinals first sub. Luke Hancock, who's in that corner with Lloyd guarding him. Outside jumper. Long for Jang. And another rebound for Kasimi, who's had 33 rebounds in the first two tournament games. Inside, no. Austin had a good look. Driving down, Smith. And off the back of the rim, and it's an offensive foul. And Siva actually with his second. Siva with two. You better stay out of the popcorn in this one, folks. Keep your head up, because they're coming fast and furious. But Hannon with the punch. Breakneck speed at the beginning. Oregon and Louisville. Let's check in with Tracy Wolfson. Well, thanks a lot, Jim. Head coach Dana Altman knows that he has a challenge on his hands. He said preparing for the Louisville full court press is like preparing for the Oregon football team's speed. He said it's just so hard to simulate. He did try during practice. He added an extra defender on the court. He also got the ball in quicker. And guys, the other challenge, preparing for this environment with Louisville just a few hours away. There's a whole lot of red here. There certainly is, and you know, we went to break with the second foul on Siva. He's been replaced by Kevin Ware, and Hancock reaches in. They call the charge going to that break on Siva. Siva picked up the dribble a little too early, and that allowed, I think that was Jonathan Lloyd who was able to step in. He needed one more dribble. Anytime you've got defenders backpedaling, you should never launch prematurely because you give that defender a chance to take the charge. Dribble it right up to him and then go around him. Singler sticks another jumper. I'll tell you what, Jim, people are wondering about Oregon, whether they can play with Louisville. The only chance they have to beat this team is to play exactly how they play. Fast, aggressive, attacking, fearless at both ends of the floor. Mix defenses, get after them, use your depth, and use your front line. And that's exactly what they're trying to do right now. Look at the defense here, changing it up. The zone. Let's see how Ware handles the point now. He comes back outside with it. Smith with the three. Yes! Russ Smith. Number two scorer in the Big East. First team all league. As Lloyd's able to break the pressure. Singler beats corner. Emery snaps it and it's back out high. Quick passing, but that quick Louisville de defense right back on top of him. Excellent recover, recovery ability for the Cardinals. And a nice show of discipline. Nice show of discipline here by Oregon. Here's Emery using the glass, and it bounds into the arms of Montrez Harrell, who's come in. A freshman. Smith again. No. And bounces out to Austin. Kazemi back out high, Lloyd. Again, they've got players off this bench as Smith now is going to be called for the reach-in. Oregon's got players 
that can really contribute off that bench. No question about it. Carlos Emery, I talked about him being an eco-booster off the bench. Certainly Jonathan Lloyd, he was the most outstanding player in the Pac-12 tournament. Is electrifying in terms of his ability to push the ball and knock down shots. So Oregon does not lack for playmakers, Jim. Five team fouls already on the Cardinals. It's Kazemi on the drive. There's a nice drive, but not able to finish, and it's off the Ducks. The mother of all comedies isn't just laugh out loud fun, it's legendary. How I Met Your Mother, Monday at 8, 7 Central. Only CBS America's most watched network. And now they put a little more pressure on Ware. A sophomore from the Bronx, New York. He's in there again with Siva sitting down with the two fouls. And the Cardinals, too. They can get a big boost off of some players, out of some players off the bench. This is going to be on Austin, Oregon. You take a look at Peyton Siva. He has fouled out, Jim, 13 times in his career, which is a big number for a guard. His aggressiveness at both ends of the floor sometimes gets him into trouble, and he'll commit some careless fouls. But Louisville has sufficient depth, particularly with the emergence of Kevin Ware as a very solid combo guard. He can step in and take care of those minutes that Siva has to sit. Hancock in the corner, and it gets down and out. But gets the rebound off the floor and knocks it in off the glass. Pass almost picked by Ware. This is a case of Oregon just not rebounding the missed shot. Challenged by Singler, and this rebound has to be grabbed. Both Oregon Ducks expected the teammate to get it, and neither one of them went after it, and Luke Hancock, right on the spot, gets an easy basket as a result. When you're the underdog, Jim, you can't afford those kind of mess ups. You got to get every loose ball and knock down your open shots. Steven Van Treese has come in for Louisville. Gives him some size in the middle. He's defending here. There's a shot again. Is put up too strong. And Harold out muscles everyone for the rebound. Where? Has Kazimi, and he's fouled. No. Put back. That's also long. Woods tries to save it. Bounces it right to the Cardinals. And one. Puts the Louisville Cardinals up 10. Getting a lot of work done in the paint are the Cardinals. Fortunate bounce here. And Kevin Ware makes it pay for Louisville. Another look at it. Three-point play opportunity when we come back. A tournament summary. Syracuse and Marquette assuring the Big East of a spot in the Final Four. They'll tangle tomorrow in Washington for the East Regional title Wichita State onto the Elite Eight will face Ohio State which has won now 11 consecutive and what a finish by LaQuentin Ross last night another strong game by LaQuentin Ross and the Buckeyes late 17 points including the game winner that's two games in a row now the Buckeyes have won on game winning threes Oregon has given up 10 points between second chance points and fast break points as Jonathan Lloyd Call for the charge there. Again, he launches a tad. Let's take a look. Launches a little prematurely going at Van Trees. Easy job for Van Trees to step in and position himself legally to take that charge. And that's now two on Lloyd, who was called for the foul on Ware when we went to the break. Nice move by Smith. Got some hang time with that little shot and got it to go. Up ahead, Emery. No, and the Cardinals are going to be whistled this time. It looked like a great defensive play. This is just a terrific shot by Russ Smith. Absolutely terrific. He has so diversified his scoring game as we look at Oregon coming the other way. Good block attempt, but a foul called, and Emory gets to the line. But you see both of these teams not hesitating at all to try to push that ball ahead as quickly as possible. The foul on Ware, his first, and one more coming for Emory. Comes off the bench, except for a few starts this year, especially when Artis was out with the foot injury. They had to rework, retool the lineup, and Lloyd has to go back down with the two fouls. But 
Emery has been a sensational six man for Coach Altman, including having 20 in that Pac-12 championship game against UCLA. Free throw there ends a 10-0 run by the Cardinals. But where they let him go, and he's got two more. They attack you in so many ways in so many different positions, Jim. Doing an awful lot of damage in the paint. As a matter of fact, I think only one three-point basket by Russ Smith is the only points they have not scored in the paint. 19 points in the paint for Louisville. And they have another steal as Smith puts it up and somehow got the angle on it. Boy, he can work his body into certain positions around that basket to get off the clean shots. Explosive start by the Cardinals. The sat down when it was 10 to 5, a 14 to 3 stretch since he's been on the bench with the two fouls. And most of the points have been in the paint. 21 of the 24, Russ Smith. Beautiful pass, Blackshear. Ware just using the pick and getting all the way to the rim. An explosive start by the Cardinals. They came in shooting 57% from the floor in the prior two tournament games, Jim, and they're on all cylinders now. Everybody in sync, focused, sharp, and Oregon has contributed to some of those scores with a lack of rebounding and not transitioning back defensively. Here's Dotson, and they need him to get in sync. As the ball is tapped out, Harrell tapped it, and that drew a foul on Singler, which is his first. Masters Live streams exclusive video of Amen Corner 15 and 16 and featured group. For more, go to cbsports.com slash masters and masters.com. As Bahannon comes back to the floor, just a little reminder that Michigan and Kansas getting started over on TBS. We invite you to go back and forth between that game and this one as Ware shows some nifty ball handling he sure skills. Does. Real tight handle there. And he's over dribbling and down. And that's exactly what happened. He over dribbled it. You know that's going to get the um, admonishment from Rick Bettino. Handled it well for a while, but if you bounce it too many times against good defenders, you'll eventually lose it in traffic. Oregon has not made a hoop in almost five minutes. And it's not like they haven't gotten a couple of good looks, Jim. They have. Artis got away from his defender, puts it up too strong off the glass, and Kazemi's in there battling Bahannon, and the jump ball arrow goes to the Altman side. Looking for some answers here, this Oregon team. As Jang returns to the floor for Van Trees. Van Trees contributing with a draw charge. Well, he does that, and he also does a nice job on the boards in the minutes that he plays, Jim. Really important for Oregon to get a couple of shots to go down in a hurry. And there's one right there. It's Kasimi. Again, comes in as the tournament's leading rebounder with 33 in the first two games. Really highly skilled, and he showed you there the ability to get off the floor. Transfer from Rice University down in Houston. Who is a three-year starter. Jang and Kazemi battling, and it's tapped over to the Cardinals, and Hancock fouled on the shot. It hasn't been the turnovers for Oregon so far in this one. It's been the lack of defensive rebounding, and a couple of times the Ducks have gotten hurt in transition. Those are things that are correctable, but you need all five guys to be locked in to run back hard, match up, and then everybody's got a rebound. Two for Hancock. Junior from Roanoke, Virginia. Sunday on The Amazing Race, the team's water ski with crocodiles. Sunday after 60 minutes, only CBS. Back onto the floor, Wayne Blackshear for Hancock. Rick Pitino has the luxury of being able to shuffle in 
three, four players off that bench and not miss a beat. This is a deep, talented, cohesive group that clearly looks like they're the odds-on favorite to win it all. There's just not much weakness in the Louisville Cardinal game. Dominic Artis hits the three from the top of the key. Smith driving in, and it's blocked, and it's off him. Yep, he touched it last year. Oregon comes in having made 16 of 32 threes in the prior two tournament games. This team is capable of knocking down threes. And even though it's down 13, if they can get a couple of threes to go, they can get back in it. with Clark Kellogg and Tracy Wolfson. Jim Nance here in Indianapolis. Look at the points in the paint already for Louisville. Dominant. Dine in dining for the Cardinals tonight. No drive through for them. <laughs> Everything sit down in the paint. And again, doing so much of this damage with Siva on the bench with two fouls. There's Artis fresh off of hitting a three. Both teams with 16 fouls, so we'll be shooting free throws on the next foul. This time Artis penetrates, tapped out by Singler to Artis, and he's got two threes in a span of 30 seconds. Brings it back to a 10-point deficit. Where with Kazemi reaching in. Now, over to Smith. He'll feed Jang and Gorgie able to work it in there for two more points in the paint. Terrific job by Gorgie Jang. He beat the double team because he was able to use good footwork and then he just muscled, out muscled his defender to get that one up on the glass. So improved offensively is Jang. Here's Emery and he's double teamed. Slips past him and Jang hacked him on the shots. And we're under eight. Time out here in Indianapolis. We're back here at Lucas Oil Stadium, where later tonight, Michigan State and Duke will be playing here. <laughs> that should be a good one. i tell you what, point guard play for Michigan State. Eppling and Trice have both dealt with injuries during the course of the year. I think they've got to be at their highest level against Duke. You know the Blue Devils count an awful lot on Seth Curry and Suleiman from the three-point line and Mason Plumley inside. Two free throws for Emery. Let's go over to Tracy. Well, guys, a much different attitude in the Oregon huddle this time around. Dana Altman saying, we finally got some stops. That's what we need to do. But he said, you have to stop standing around more. We're not rebounding. We're not hitting our shots. Keep playing your game and breathe. A lot of nervous energy, guys. Well, for this group, they've had a great late season run. They exploded to the start, really, 18 and two. And then Artis went down with an injury. Blackshear takes the jumper. And Kazimi with the rebound for Oregon. Here's Artis. He bounces it inside, and Kazimi able to escape Ware's reach and attempt at the steal and get the lay in and down to nine now. How about the little personal run by Dominic Artis? Back to back threes, and then a beautiful pass on the pick and roll by Artis that time as well. So Oregon, again, because of the pace at which this team plays, tough foul that time by Artis dealing with Russ Smith. But let's take a look at the spacing and the excellent decision here by Artis. Nice screen by Kissimmee, then the quick roll. So important when you set that screen as a big guy, you've got to roll out of it immediately. So you have an opportunity to do just that, finish at the rim. First foul on Artis, and Smith will shoot one more. Coming off a huge first weekend of the tournament. Hancock back in for Blackshear. But Russ Smith so good at Rupp Arena, they were calling it Russ Arena over in Lexington. That had to hurt for some I'm Kentucky faithful. I'm sure it did, but this young man is some kind of player, Jim. Terrific kid, 83% free throw shooter, and relentless in terms of his energy and stamina. Love the fearlessness with which he plays at both ends. He had 23 against North Carolina A&T, 27 against Colorado State. 
including also a record, NCAA tournament record, eight steals in the game against North Carolina AT and A and T. As Artis, he challenged Jang and he went up and over and banked it in. He's young, got eight now. Young fellow starting to show the form he showed in the first 19 games, Jim. He was in double digits in 14 of those and playing at a really high level. Here you take a look at Artis. Jang going to come from the weak side. But every small guard better have that high arcing floater in his game. Nice job by Zhang. You see him recognizing the drive coming, but Artis just got it over the fingertip of him. As you take a look at Carlos Emery, gonna sit down with two fouls now. Coming in for Emery is Ben Carter, who's been getting more valuable minutes of late. A freshman from Las Vegas. One more for Hancock at the line. Louisville has brought in Tim Henderson, the junior from right there in Louisville. Number 15, his first action. Hey, the Ducks now with a mini spurt, a 10-4 stretch. Fueled by this young man, a freshman. Here's Carter taking it to Chang, who blocks it. And Carter get a second attempt. But again, influenced by Jang's presence. Smith in the paint and clobber. He puts such pressure on you when he's attacking in the open court because he can knock it down with the mid-range, but he's explosive going to the hole. And this guy, Gorgie Zhang, is explosive denying shots. Excellent timing, good movement of his feet, and then the denial. Dominic Artis picked up his second foul on that Russ Smith drive. Kevin Ware back out for the Cardinals. And that's part of what Louisville wants to do to you as you see Tim Henderson leaving. They want to have the cumulative effect of the pressure and the constant substitution, the experience, the physical maturity of the players wear you down. Those free throws give Russ Smith now 12 points here in the first half. He had 18 in the first half against Colorado State last weekend on his way to the 27. So another big time start for the junior from Brooklyn, New York. Dotson hasn't hit one yet. He's 0 for 4 from the field. Pulled down by Bahannon, their second leading rebounder. Smith. That is off of Louisville. The Cardinals bench, we've talked about it. It's deep, it's talented. And for more on Louisville's depth, get Team Stream from Bleacher Report to find out. That bench has outscored their opponents in 12 straight games. The opponent's bench. And Artis still on the floor with the two fouls. Five and a half to go, first half. Can't afford to take him out right now, Jim. He's playing too well, and it's too critical a time for Oregon. You know you've got Lloyd. He's got two fouls as well, so you're pretty much in a situation where you've got to leave him out there. Three to shoot. Dotson has to take it over Hancock. Tapped up into the air and picked up by Singler. Driving in was Dotson, lost control. He was now, running before he caught it. Now Louisville running, and Smith again. But Jang in the right spot. They travel. Fast and furious, just the way we like it, partner. Get up and down and go after it both ways. Fifth turnover against Louisville. Cardinals coming in on a 12-game win streak. Up it to Kazemi, and Jank reached around and stole it. Oh, Gonna wow. Going to be a foul on Carter. He got a lot of the pumpkin there. That seemed like an anticipated call. Let's look and see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Man, that's a tough one. That's not a foul. That's not a foul. That's a good held ball situation. I think the official may have been blocked out by the other Ducks player there. 
Double bonus, 10 team fouls now on Oregon. And As, this is the last guy you want to see at the line if you're the duck, yeah. Russ Smith. Emory and Lloyd are returning with the two fouls, and now Artis with his two will sit down. All outstanding scores, Jim, find a way to get the easy ones, either at the line or in transition. Russ Smith gonna get a break now. What a first half he's put together in 16 minutes. But he averages seven free throw attempts per game, and he makes six of them. And that's one of the things you want to try to negate when you're playing Louisville. Don't let him get free ones at the line. So far, he's making Oregon pay for fouling. And Smith is going to sit on the stool up on the floor, not down in the dugout with the rest of his teammates. As Singler followed up for two by Emery. Thirty three twenty three Louisville. Where looking for help. Bahannon. There's a reach in by Lloyd. It's going to be his third and he thought it was all ball as well. Seemed like he got an awful lot of the ball that time too. A couple of tough calls going against Oregon here on the last few possessions Jim. And this is a big one because it's Lloyd's third. Boy. That's one that I think is a play on. Matter of fact I know that's a play on. Unfortunate for Oregon and Lloyd. Shane Bahannon, sophomore from Cincinnati, and gets another shot at the line here. In the regional round last year, Louisville was out west, beat Michigan State, which was the one seed in this Sweet 16 round, then beat Florida in the final. And Bahannon, who hit one out of two at the line right there, was the most outstanding player of the West bracket a year ago. Yeah, he was outstanding, Jim. Hasn't scored nearly as much good luck for single. Well executed play. Paul coming down the floor, little screen, and then a pin back, a pin down, and this curl out to the three point line by Singler. Well done. Well, the lead had been as high as 16. It's been cut in half. 34 26. Squeeze the pass, and timeout called. Timeout called by Louisville. With 325 to go in the first half. Here you take a look at Oregon doing a nice job executing. Nice little screen. We're going to get the screen right here by Kasimi. And then EJ Singer just going to pop back. Really nice job of setting up his defender for that screen and then coming off of it. Kasimi does so much of the little stuff. Excellent rebounder, good ball handler and passer. And there you saw him freeing up a teammate with a solid screen. Not only did he set the screen well, Jim, he timed it well, and Singler did a terrific textbook job of setting his defender up. Now coming out of that Louisville timeout, with six to shoot, Jang, they get the shot they wanted. Called the timeout, set up a great play. Back to 10, and Jang has eight. That's why he's on the Hall of Fame ballot, Rick Pitino. Artis, right back though to Emory. Oregon doing a much better job, them on both boards in terms of rebounding. They've gotten some extra shot chances just by virtue of being aggressive and getting missed shots. And that's a foul on Bahannon. We'll send Carter to the line when we come back. To Jimmy Clark. Thank you, Greg. That's some matchup down there in Arlington, which will be the site of next year's Final Four. Look at the Ducks in foul trouble, led by Lloyd's three. He has not scored in this game, nor has Damian Dotson. But they'll have Carter at the line shooting a couple. Coming up at and at the half, Greg, Greg, Doug, Kenny, and Charles. They'll take it right back for another look live at Michigan, Kansas. Again, currently on TBS, plus the latest NCAA tournament news on at and at the half. 
really important that Artis and Emery be able to play this last 245 without picking up that third foul, Jim. And for Oregon to continue to do a good job on both backboards, Louisville just has to execute, keep that floor space so they're not crowded in the half court. Nice drive by Ware. And the foul is going to go against Oregon. Count the basket. That's why you space the floor, because you want to be able to create driving lanes for guys like Kevin Ware. And he went right between them. Beautiful job by Ware to split these defenders. So that's an easy call for the official there. Neither one of those guys, Singler or Carter, in legal guarding position because Ware split them. And the call was against Carter, his second. Ware giving them very good minutes. Again, with Siva having gone out of the game with two fouls when the score was 10 to 5. Jim, I called the last single digit margin of victory for Louisville back on March 2nd at Syracuse. Kevin Ware was a significant player in that game as well, growing in confidence, and you can see that he's got tremendous ability as a scorer and playmaker. There's Singler with the jumper. Well done. Now, yeah, well, Ware's coming off a career high five assists in the win last weekend against Colorado State so he is finding ways to contribute as you said both scoring and setting up his teammates now with 145 to go in the half and trees back out to where here's where off the glass for two more Ware has nine. Really difficult to be able to defend guys that can go one on one as well as Smith and Ware can. Second foul on Hancock. And that was the ninth team foul, so a one and one coming up for Artis. Again, out nine games with that foot injury. They were 17 and 2 when he got hurt. By the time he came back and worked them back into the starting lineup, they're 5 and 0 oh since. So 22 and 2 as a starter. Mm -hmm. His absence, though, gave others a chance to kind of work into the system. This paid off here in the postseason. A turnover against Louisville. They gave Carter and Emery and Austin and Lloyd. They were able to suffer through not their best stretch. Right. But it's helped now pay dividends this time of year. Artist driving in and banking it in. No one came over to guard him. Down the nine. Smith. Again, what body control by Russ Smith. He's a contortionist and a fearless one at that, which makes him extra dangerous. He's got 16. Dotson. Dotson is really off the mark tonight. Yeah, he's pressing a bit, Jim. Has been from the start. 0 for 6 from the field. And he comes in having made 8 of 15 from the three-point line in the first two tournament games. Blackshear on the wing. All net. Got to make sure you get the last shot here if you're Oregon. Well, they're not doing it. Hardis goes up, and it spins out. And now Louisville can take the last shot. That's the case of a young fella just getting a little too exuberant. Largest lead of the half was 16 at 26 to 10. Oregon got it back down to eight, but now the Cardinals can either match that largest lead or exceed it with a three. Three seconds to go. Smith to Van Trees with the jumper, and no. That is the most points allowed by Oregon this year in the first half. Cardinals close on a 14 to 5 stretch to up at the 14. Let's go to Tracy. Thanks a lot. Coach, an early lead. It looks like Oregon started to get their rhythm, and then you rolled away down the stretch. What was the difference there? Well, we're not playing Louisville defense. We're winning with offense, and that's a recipe for failure. 
We'll go in at halftime. We're going to play defense in the second half. That's not Louisville basketball. How about the way that Ware and Smith stepped up in place of Siva being out with foul trouble? Both both guys played great. They're keeping us in the game. We just got to be very careful. They're the best transition basketball. North Carolina, Oregon, push it the best in the country. We got to get back. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Jim? Smith and Ware had 25 of the Louisville 45 total. Again, Michigan and Kansas is available right now over on TBS. Louisville 45, Oregon 31 will send you the AT&T at the half. After these messages, you're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Here are the first half stats presented by Coke Zero. Louisville with only three field goals from outside the paint. Another great shooting performance as they keep taking it to the rack. Jim Nance, Clark Kellogg, along with Tracy Wilson. If Oregon gets back into this game, how are they going to do it? Or can they? They certainly can do it, Jim. The key is going to be defending better at the point of attack. Can't allow all those drives, and they've got to do so without fouling, and then they've got to get Dotson going. He's 0 for 6, been pressing. He's got to get some shots to go down in the second half. Let's go over to Tracy. Well, guys, I had a chance to speak with head coach Dana Alton, and he said, we can't give up 60% shooting. We need to make some stops, and like you mentioned, Clark, they need to hit some shots, and he said it starts with Dana Damian Dotson, he said he got really frustrated early. He needs to settle down. They're going to try and give him the ball early just to get his confidence back up, guys. Well, they'll need him 0 for 6 in that first half. Meanwhile, Siva played only 4 minutes and 41 seconds before picking up his second foul. But boy, did Kevin Ware step up and Russ Smith with another huge first half with 16. Well, they had 25 points between them, Jim, did Smith and Ware. And they shot 9 of 14 because they got a lot of forays to the basket. That has to be cut off. Easier said than done because of the speed of both Smith and Ware. And now Siebel will be on the floor, and he, too, can get to the rim. Oregon's got to tighten it up defensively. They've got to stay in front of the ball. Get do a better job of keeping the ball out of the paint and then make Louisville settle for some jump shots. I don't think they can afford to change the pace. They've got to continue to play at this pace, and they need Dotson to settle down and knock down a couple of good shots that he gets. Louisville back out with its first five. Mahanan to Smith. Siva on the far side, and Dotson tripped him up. His first. An Oregon team, Clark, none of these kids have ever played in an arena of this size. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, it's, of course, a Louisville team uh, that was at the Final Four last year in New Orleans. And Never can discount the benefit of that kind of experience, Jim. Taken away by Woods. It's Dotson. Will he challenge Siva? Takes it to the hole, and he's called for the offensive foul. Wow. Dotson's second and then they both happen here just at the start of the second half but this is another case of him oh wow that's not a very good call and it's a case of Dotson I don't think Siebel was in legal guarding position there I don't think so at all but another case of Dotson launching prematurely when you have the ball in transition Jim and I drum this all the time because it's such a basic fundamental you are in control of the situation take your time and get the shots you want to get you don't have to leave the floor prematurely look at the shot off the glass by Smith another case where Oregon we saw that a couple of times in the first half Jim early in the game Oregon seems to have a rebound force to miss don't come up with it and Louisville score Louisville matching its biggest lead of 16. And Artis with Blackshear on him. Fighting through a pick. Over to Kazemi. They want to go to the big man. Woods with the hook, and he's got it. I like that action there. I'd like to see Tony Woods maybe get started a little bit. Did not play a bunch in that first half. Actually, has not played significant minutes here recently but he's a guy that I think because of his size and experience could be a factor offensively another assist by Siva he didn't play much in that first half but he had a couple of beautiful assists in that half Jim he truly is a pass first point guard really wants to serve and set up his teammates here's Singler he'll take the jumper a good look but it's long and Jang Pulls it away. Just the third rebound for Jang tonight. And 
and right back with it is Dotson. Eighth turnover against Louisville. When you get mistakes from the Cardinals, you need to make them pay. If you're Oregon, that's one way to get back in it. Get stopped, and then you got to score the ball. Tough shot that time by Arden. Yeah, again, feeling the presence of Chang. There is Smith. Brought back out, Blackshear. Driving in on Woods. Wildly puts it up, water the whistle. That was Bahannon, I think, Jim. Yep. He did a great job reeling in that offensive rebound, and then he kind of took a weak shot. Jank up ahead, and Kazimi knocks it out of the hands of Siva. Here you take a look at the steal by Zhang, and then a nice job by Kazimi. Kazemi, who knew he couldn't get to the ball, but he kept Peyton Siva from being able to get it as well. Woods and Artis out. Uh, Lloyd and Emery back in. And they need production from those two. It's a quiet first half. Lloyd saddled with three fouls. And there again, Smith, like he did in the first half, sits on a stool. And of course, the bench is down below court level, but he's going to stay up the right up there next to his coach. As Siva comes in on Kazemi. Back out to Ware on a wing. Now Siva as the Ducks try to switch off and get back to their defense, to their man. Jang, Siva, got a size advantage on Lloyd. Three to shoot, short. Lloyd off the floor, picks it up. Emery outside, Lloyd, and he's got a three. Jonathan Lloyd. He's had a late season sudden confidence in his shot. And he's got his first points of the night. That was his first attempt. Now with Ware on the floor. Dumps it down low. Jang over Kazimi. And again, showing that that whole game that he's got the jumper to work it inside that he's developed so well. He's a vastly improved offensive player as Emery answers back. I love the quick attack of Oregon. They just have to be able to string together some stops. But the versatility of Louisville offensively, particularly in the ability to penetrate like that. Oh, wow, that's a tough one. Siva may have picked up his third. Instead, it goes against Kazemi. Second on Kazemi. The overall number one seed. They're getting it done in a big way. Contributions from every one of those guys you just saw. Siva at the line to shoot a couple. He has not scored in this game. Again, taken out early because of foul issues, but what a great young man he's been for this program and the Big East Scholar Athlete of the Year. You know, when I look at Peyton Siva, and I've had a chance to do a number of his games, he reminds me an awful lot of Aaron Kraft. By the way, coming in to the building, the Duke Blue Devils. The last time they played here at Lucas Oil, they won the national championship in 2010 and survived Gordon Hayward's half court heave at the buzzer that very nearly dropped. Duke and Michigan State later tonight. Here's Lloyd. Lloyd, nice move. No, slides off. Oh. Rip, tapped up, though. <laughs> Followed his own shot. <laughs> That's the way you bag your own groceries, Jonathan. How did he slip over to that side and do that? Well, he bounced up rather quickly, knew where he had missed it, and then chased it down. That's a great example of you scan. Jang lost control of it, and Emery has it up ahead to Lloyd. And Jang's bearing down on bounce pass back to Dotson. One too many passes, and it's intercepted by Siva. All Oregon had their shot right there. Smith with a three. Bouncing out Emery to Kazemi. Here's Dodson, and he's in the scoring column for the first time today. And mark it down, Jim. Sometimes when a guy has struggled from the perimeter, as Dotson has, they get one to go down. It could be the start of a personal run. A little 9 3 spurt by Oregon led to a timeout. You see, Russ Tacular, Russ Smith. 
or buckets by Russ with virtual madness coming right at you. Turnover, and here he comes, number two. Nobody does it better. Attacking three defenders when you've got his speed and his fearlessness makes no difference. Mark it up. He was able to do that consistently in the first half, as was Kevin Ware, even as Peyton Siva sat for about 16 minutes in that first half. Russ Tacular. Russ Tacular. Some I like say Russ Diculous. Well, you can go anyway. Or <laughs> yeah, they both work. Buckets by Russ. <laughs> there you go. So that 9 3 stretch got Coach Patino to call a timeout. And a little switch off as Siva. So back over to Smith. Well, I love the way Kasemi jumps out and really hard hedges. You see that? Beautifully done. Because he takes the guard east and west instead of letting him turn the corner. Great grab by Siva. Puts up the three. And it's going to be against Van Vantrese. Instructional video time, folks. Arsalan Kasemi doing a terrific job of impacting the ball. Impacting the ball, doing a nice job moving his feet, having his hands active, terrific work. And then a foul called on Van Trees for Louisville. And Oregon with a chance to get it to single digits. Can't over dribble against the pressure. They took it right away from Dotson and Smith lays it in. He's got 20. That's a big turnaround there, Jim. Boy, he is tripped up. Called on Siva, his third. One of the things that you can't do against this kind of pressure is check the air in the basketball. Get it off the ground and move it with the pass. Rustacular, so good at moving his feet and taking the ball off the dribbler, Jim. I don't know if there's a better guard in the country at doing that. Well, Aaron Kraft is right in the same category. Started to mention Aaron Kraft and Peyton Siva, how they remind me of one another. High character guys with talent and unbelievable leadership skills and academic acumen. Here's the lob pass to where as Siva sits with the three fouls. Hand on. And look at the rebound attempt by Harold. Forcing the jump ball, the arrow will go to the Ducks, but good hustle by Montrez, the freshman from Tarboro, North Carolina. Montrez Harold. He's got tremendous potential, Jim. He doesn't play a lot of minutes, but boy, he packs a lot of production into it as Dotson leaves and Dominic Artis returns. But Montrez Harold, terrific athlete, the wingspan of a condor and strength and bounce to chase down missed shots. And Smith reach it in. His second. Well, it looked like a five center here. Russ Smith pressuring the ball up against Lloyd. Well, he got the hands on him. That's a good call. You can't impede with the hands on the dribbler. Now Smith manning up on Artis. Here's Emery. Nice job by Hancock to take away that baseline. Emery makes the move to the corner. Whip back out on the wing. Singler. And Harrell reaching in. The NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship continues tomorrow on ESPN with regional semifinal action. Delaware battles Kentucky. Coverage begins at noon Eastern. And for more information on the women's championship, go to NCAA.com. Three fouls on Louisville in less than a minute of action. And that was the fourth team foul on the Cardinals. Emery lost it, but might be on. It is on where? Jim, I talked about what Oregon needed to do to get back into this as we came into the start of this second half. You need to improve your defensive work on the point of attack, not allow as much opportunity inside as Louisville got in the first half. They've done that. Got to get some shots to go down, starting to make some progress there. And one of the other ways is to get to the bonus as quickly as possible so you can begin to get to the foul line and chip away at this deficit with the clock stopped. 
Emery hits two, the senior from Bloomington, Minnesota. So five team fouls on Louisville the first seven minutes of this second half. And the Louisville crowd rising to its feet, trying to cheer on the Cardinals as Chang misses, and Oregon picks it off the floor. Artis, top of the key jumper, yes, that's a two. Very impressed with this young man's game, Jim. You know, it takes a little while when you come back from injury to get your game conditioning back. This is the best he's looked since his return, Jim. 13 to 5 stretch here for the Ducks. And again, Kazemi out there. And this time it's Emery with the body. Nice execution in the half court by the Ducks. There you go, Kasimi doing a nice job just brushing off Smith enough to free up Artis. And Artis doing a nice job of taking the right angle with the dribble. Went a little bit north-south, but went horizontal as well to create that spacing. Smith drives in for two more. Jimmy's almost unguardable when he's got the floater working. Singler fake the shot, and it's off Harold. We got the under 12 break. Louisville's margin is still a 10, 56 46. The second half, back to Jim and Clark in Indy. Keep us posted. Thank you, Greg. Rick Pitino against never lost in this spot in a regional semifinal. Sweet 16 games. 10 and 0 all time. In fact, the closest anyone's ever been to him, he was at Kentucky. He beat UMass back in the 90s by 10. The rest of them have been even bigger blowouts, averaging 21 and a half point margin of victory in his 10 and 0 Sweet 16 matchups. Give him those days to prepare, four or five days, and look what he's done. We're not talking about first round games. You're talking about quality teams that's in this spot. That's exactly right, Jim. So impressive, and that's why I think he will be a Hall of Famer on the ballot this spring. We'll find out at the Final Four, but that type of resume, in addition to everything else he's done in college basketball, makes him a Hall of Famer in my mind. As you take a look, five seconds now for Oregon to try to get a shot off. It'll be interesting, Jim, if Oregon could get all the way back and close the gap to single digits. Louisville has not been challenged that way in a long time. Four seconds, three, two. Good defense. Jang comes out with it. Terrific defense that time by Russ Smith against Dominic Artis. And that's going to go against Smith. That's his third. You talk about Louisville hasn't been challenged in a long time. Of course, that Big East final, they faced a massive second half deficit against Syracuse, and what a turnaround it was in that game. That's three on Smith again. They were down 16 to Syracuse, and then one of the great runs you'll ever see. Singler wide of the mark. Oregon is yet to be able to penetrate this 10 12 point cushion that Louisville has enjoyed and you know as the clock continues to tick they're going to have any chance they've got to penetrate that and put some real pressure on Louisville they're continuing to be able to operate comfortably as long as that lead is double digits artists scrappy on the floor jump ball it will stay with the Cardinals on the arrow. Tell you what, Dominic Artis has been very impressive at both ends. I recognized the pick was coming and then just got over top of it and then the quick hands, because his feet were in good position, almost forced the turnover. You know, partner, I was talking about that 27-3 run by Louisville over Syracuse, and of course Syracuse struggled at the end of the regular season, got wins in the Big East tournament. Look at him now, it's game away from the Final Four. As Siva hits his shot from three-point land, his first field goal of the night. Up ahead, Singler, and he's got two back. What a catch and finish by E.J. Singler. That's a case of knowing exactly where you were, concentrating on the ball, and then a terrific finish and an outstanding pass as well. Out to see another three. And it's Harold to Jang. 
Snaps it out Smith. He'll challenge inside and he takes a spill. Russ is just relentless. So relentless. Keeps so much pressure on the opposing defense. Grimacing a bit as he takes this one hard to the rim trying to punch it. The foul should have been called on Kazemi. They called it on Artis. Wow. I thought Artis made a gamble and didn't touch the ball or Smith. It's a long continuation if it was on Artis. <laughs> he was well into a shooting motion though partner. And now Artis to the bench. Twelve point Louisville lead. Emory to get the single digits. And Jang out high to Hancock, back to Jang. Wrap around pass. Harold for two. Look at Jang now setting up a teammate. Quick head ahead. Emory. And Jang. Rejects at the other end. Saved by Hancock. Third block of the game for Gorky. Emery leaves his feet. Hancock knocks down the three from the corner. Timeout. Oh. Basketball, is it better to be a fast player or a slow player? Fast! So what would your nickname be? The Cardinals displaying some spreadability here. A 12-2 run. That's Jing with the denial. And then Luke Hancock. Cool hand Luke. Splash! And as you would expect, a huge Louisville turnout. Here in Indianapolis, and the crowd was behind him in that stretch. They sensed there was a chance there for the Cardinals to try to go in for the kill. Well, that's one of the things they do to you, Jim. The cumulative effect of the pressure. The way they bring players in waves at you. They never tire. They're never fatigued. They're always aggressive. And they can hit you with multiple spurts. And that was a big one. As you take a look at Blackshear coming in for Luke Hancock, who just picked up a foul that sends Louisville into the penalty, Oregon into the bonus. One and one for Singler. And Wednesday on CBS, someone's getting blindsided on a new survivor. Wednesday at 8, 7 Central, only CBS. So Singler, who has more wins than any player in Oregon basketball history, 89 wins, hits the two free throws. They're going to be hard. He's going to be hard pressed to get 90. Because Louisville is so good in this position, Jim. They execute. Jang has showed you everything in his game, offensively and defensively. It's Sifa. And back out with his Lord. They've got the numbers. Run the break with Dodson. And count the basket. Well, I like the aggressive take there. And a good call is. Blackshear trying to get back and position himself for the charge. But he gets there and he leans into the driving Dotson. Seems like he gets outside the well, actually he had his heel on the restricted arc area, but I don't think he was in legal guarding position had he even gotten outside of it. But it's immediately when you step on that restricted arc area, you can't be in legal guarding position. So Dotson, freshman from Houston, Texas, Texas. The Houston Chronicle, Greater Houston Player of the Year last year. Gets the three-point play. Dotson's eight points all in this half. As Kasimi brought it down with a clean block on Ware. Ball on the floor. Picked up Dotson. In trouble, and Lloyd can't climb that high. That's a violation. That 
Oh, some play by Arsalan Kazemi. Big time play. Boy, he does an awful lot that impresses you, Jim. Arsalan Kazemi. Rebounds. Defense, defensively active. Skilled with the ball. That's a big turnover for Oregon. They had made a little 5-0 surge and had a chance to add more to it. Look at Ware. Almost banked it home. And Kazemi again, smart player. Bounce pass, Singler. And Oregon now is down 11 with seven and a half to go. When you attack the way Oregon does, Jim, you're never quite out of it. And they haven't made threes the way they're capable of, but they just haven't penetrated the comfort zone of Louisville yet. Because it's maintained, Louisville has maintained that double-digit cushion. Last seven, though, to the Ducks, who don't give up under Dana Altman. As they tangle here, seven minutes to go for the Elite Eight. Right, the winner of that one to face the winner of Florida and Florida Gulf Coast, which will be the second game on the floor there in Arlington. Meanwhile, here, Louisville has never trailed in this one, leads it by 11, although the Ducks have scored the last seven points. At the line, Smith, who's having another big night. There's the 53% from the field for the Cardinals. Their top two field goal percentage games of the year, Clark, have come in these first two NCAA tournament games, and they're right in that same neighborhood percentage-wise tonight. Yeah, circle the 36 points in the paint. That's one way you shoot a high percentage. Get as many opportunities at the rim as you can. Well, I tell you what, Oregon's put together a valiant effort, but they're just not quite able to match everything that Louisville can throw at them in terms of offensive firepower and defensive prowess. And now, with 16 fouls, Louisville shoots free throws on the next common one as Dotson backs wow. up into a three. Now the freshman starting to show his game. Stolen away by the other freshman guard. Artis, it's a singler. Nice catch. Bypasses the shot and sets up Kazemi for the dunk. Beautifully done. Excellent patience by Oregon in transition. Never settled. Kazemi seems to be limping a little bit. May have hurt himself there, Jim. 12-2 run. a steal by Emory. Smith now will challenge Singler up and over him for two more. 28 now for Russ Smith. Dotson, no look pass. Kazimi. And one. Bow on Jang. Excellent action by Oregon, penetration by Dotson, the good footwork. And Kasimi got his body into the shot blocker and was able to convert and draw the foul. You see he's actually pulling on his right foot there, Jim. I saw him on that fast break dunk he got. He may have landed awkwardly and perhaps may have jammed the toe and is trying to fight through it. Waving off the... Ask for a timeout. Well, now with the free throw, can cut it seven. Long rebound, tapped around, and Oregon has it. And a timeout called by the Ducks. How about this little comeback? Pretty strong. Here's the Infinity Coach's spotlight. Dana Altman coaching him up. Third year there in Eugene. 20 wins each year. It's the first time Oregon's had three straight 20 win seasons since 37, 38, and 39. 39 the first year of the NCAA tournament. And of course, the Ducks, known then as the Tall Furs, won the championship in Evanston, Illinois, beating Ohio State in the final. Texas and Oklahoma on the way to the championship. 
So Kazemi's on the bench. They're working on that foot. We saw him bothered by that before. Massaging the calf area. And Woods is back on the floor for him. Here's Singler, and he almost lost it. Plenty of time on the shot clock. When you're Oregon here in this situation, you've got to run through every pass and be strong with the ball. Dotson. And it's down to six. The closest Oregon has been in this half. They had been down by 18. Jim, you and I talked about how would Louisville respond if they got challenged late because they've had such an easy go of it in the 12 game winning streak. And you think about what's at stake, how will they respond just like that? Kevin Ware off the bounce. So hard to guard he and Russ Smith because they can manufacture shots and they can make tough ones. Here's Artis. Long pass, almost picked by Siva. Singler three. Tapped up Emory, no. Jang outlet to Siva. He had the hand and up ahead, but decided wisely to pull it out. Nice job, a much better job in this second half of transition defense by Oregon. Part of it is being intentional about running back. The other part is offense has been a little better for Oregon so they can set the transition defense better. And Siva, inside dumps the pass, Bahannon. Over Singler, and it rattles out. And Artis was caught behind Jang and grabbed him and committed the foul. Free throws when we come back. Louisville still comfortably in front. Great images of tonight's game brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Nice fight by the Oregon Ducks. Dana Altman. He's the all-time winningest coach in Creighton history. Took them to the tournament seven times, but this is the first time he's ever coached in this spot in the Sweet 16. Yeah, he's one of the outstanding coaches. A bit undervalued and underrated across the country, but he's been good for a long time. And you can see his team responding, competing very well, and actually winning this second half. One and one for Gorgi Zhang, who was fouled by Dominic Artis, who was trying to block him out on that weak side board. And important to note, the fourth on Artis. Yeah. Who was, of course, uh, with 348 to go, still on the floor. So one and one, as you said. Jang. Kazemi returns, pulls down another board. He's really an impressive all-around player, Kazemi. Oh, if he makes a good pass, maybe Singler has a shot there. Good close out by Blackshear. Oregon shooting 59% in this half, and Artis lost it on the way up. Blackshear coming out with it. This is where Louisville will look to really try to isolate Russ Smith and let him do his thing. Smith sets up a Hannon. That is his thing right there. Yeah, he's grown in that area, Jim. A year ago, he tried to make a play for himself off that high screen and roll. Now he's gotten much better at recognizing defenders coming at him and giving the ball to the open teammate. Russ Smith, he not only can score, he can drop dimes too. Louisville by 10. And let's take a look at our Capital One Cup impact performance. Who else? Russ Smith. <laughs> He's been magnificent. He makes so many tough shots. His speed gets him to where he wants to go, and he can finish through contact or over it. He's just three away from tying his career high of 31. Also tying the, the biggest individual performance of this tournament so far, Khalif Wyatt of Temple. Did it twice. Ducks with Emery. Driving in, and Jang says, Get that out of here. He's been an impact performer, too, as has Kevin Ware. But Jang just showing you that he always is hovering around the goal. Tremendous timing. 
I thought Emory had a chance to give that ball to an open teammate and elected to try to challenge Zhang and no go there. Fourth block by Gorgie Zhang. Back out high Dotson. He really helped fuel a nice charge by the Ducks. Here's Lloyd. Tough shot. And that's short. And two and a half to go. Louisville ball up ten. Trying to advance to the Elite Eight for the fourth time in the last six years. And this is going to send Smith back to the line. Kazemi whistled for that one, his third. Russ Smith, who came out of that legendary Archbishop Malloy program that also delivered our own Kenny Smith. Kenny Anderson. Jim Laranego, of course, coached the great season for Miami this year. And the story there, of course, with Archbishop Malloy this year, the legendary coach, Jack Curran, Russ Smith's coach, passed away on the first day of the Big East Tournament. to six at 70 to 64. But Louisville now with the last six points. Dotson kept alive, but a whistle on Oregon. And I'll tell you what. Emory's fourth. The Ducks have fought hard, but the Louisville Cardinals just a little too much. As you look at Peyton Siva returning, the surge at the end of the first half gave Louisville that 14-point cushion. And Oregon never quite able to get all the way back. Credit Louisville. High percentage shooting. Russ Smith doing his damage off the dribble. How about a rebound? Tell you what, you look at Artis and Dotson. Think about what those guys can become as sophomores, Jim. The Ducks are going to be cracking loud and long for a while with those two guys to build around. <laughs> loud and proud. Yeah. As Dotson just mentioned, that old freshman backcourt, he has it knocked out of his hands with 1.41 to go. Here's a senior, Emery, to another one. Singler. Lloyd. Inside and nice move followed up. No, Emory, yes, got it the second time. And that is going to be it. Nope, that's on Lloyd. It's just his fourth. Smith to shoot two. Double bonus. Two free throws for a career high. He's now matched it. Hancock for Blackshear. Up. Right at 31. And again, that ties Khalif Wyatt. We saw last week in Dayton that uh, had two spectacular performances for most points by an individual in this tournament. Long shot by Dotson. And it goes back to Louisville with 109 to play. Blackshear going to replace. But Hannon, another good free throw shooter for Louisville. You've got Siva out there, Smith, and Zhang as a big release if you need him. And Siva back outside, Hancock flying past the memory. And the pain and off the rim. And Kazemi. Is hit from behind. 
Really didn't necessarily need that shot if you're Louisville. Plenty of time still on the shot clock. You'd like to milk that clock, but I guess Hancock figured that he could make that layup and wanted to add two more to the total. 52 seconds to go. The last hopes for the Pac-12 right here as Arizona fought Ohio State to the buzzer last night. Yeah. Terrific and game. Two in the Sweet 16. Wildcats eliminated out there in Los Angeles. And Oregon, the last one standing. But not for long. Nope. This one is simply a matter of what the final margin will be. Impressive performance by the Cardinals. Jumped on the Ducks early and then kept them at bay despite a terrific second half effort by Oregon. The arrow will go to Oregon. We are going to have some scene here on Sunday <laughs> as Louisville will play the winner of the Michigan State Duke game, which will be coming up a half an hour after this one. It's been about this margin most of the night. Ten point lead, final half minute at Lucas Oil. Just 34 seconds to go. We'll put Louisville in the bracket for Sunday. And when we saw the brackets, on Selection Sunday and we saw Michigan State we said wow as a three and Duke is two. Louisville the number one overall what a region it's going to be in Indianapolis and it held up that way for the top three. And you saw the Spartans getting off the bus here. Here's Dotson inside and he's got two more and a timeout called by Oregon. No, they did not get a timeout. They signaled to the bench and going to put the ball back in play. Hancock runs the baseline up to Siva. Then Altman just said no foul. Got to do it. And the Cardinals elite eight bound. For the fourth time in six years. As they try to make another run for the final four for a second straight year. Patino now 11 and 0 in the Sweet 16, and this is the closest anyone's ever been to him. Eight. A wire-to-wire -wire victory for the 11th time this season for the Cardinals of Louisville, who have now trailed for only four minutes and 29 seconds in the 120 minutes of action in this tournament. You can turn to TBS now for Kansas and Michigan coming up on CBS a little bit later. Michigan State against Duke will be back here for that one. We'll send you to our studio after these messages. Now here with Russ Smith. Russ Diculous again. 31 points. You're just so dialed in. Are you feeling it right now? Uh, I don't want to say that. I just want to, you know, thank my teammates, you know, for putting me in the positions to score. And I just play hard and leave it all on the floor. And I give credit to myself because I really follow the scouting report very well. How about what coach said in, in defense and just needing to step up in the second in the next game? You know, that's what we have to do. We know at the end of the day, when it's tourney time, it, it, it comes down to making stops. No matter how much you score, what's going to get you to the, to move on is when you get some stops in the defensive end. Michigan State or Duke, you got to be look, looking forward to that one. Pick your poison. Both of them are tremendous. So we just have to sit back, watch, scout, and go back to the lab and do what we do best and find a way to come out with a victory. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thanks. Tracy, thank you. You have one more thing you want to do. I don't even know what to say. The NCAA tournament once again an outrageous night of action. Louisville is the top overall seed in the tournament. Sean Farnham is here. Let's see if he can run as fast as Oregon and the Cardinals can. Whatever the over is in this game in Vegas, take it because it's going to be a track meet. Track meet for Oregon. Something Steve Prefontaine would love. But hey, out of the gate, it is Louisville. Look at that pass from Peyton Siva to Shane Bahannon and then 
It's rusticulous. Yeah, they just got out to a great start, a great flow. You see the score at the bottom of your screen. A lot of that predicated upon defense. Early steals led to transition points for the Louisville Cardinal. It played a big part all night long. You can see why Rick Pitino named one of his horses after Russ Smith. The horsepower of the Cardinals was outstanding. But Dominic Artis is a freshman, and they are so good when he's healthy. I was so impressed with Artis and Damian Dotson tonight. They both came to play. They were pretty efficient considering the stage that they were on. Luke Hancock from downtown. Sean, they just have so many weapons. See the Hancock. The hand and Blackshear. Who's going to stop this team? Well, they can stop themselves, and okay. sometimes they get a little bit out of control. They forget about their defensive assignments, but that was not the case tonight. Excellent job executing, attacking, of being being aggressive in this game, and they live to fight on. And there's your capper. They survive and advance, as somebody once famously said. Louisville wins 77-69. A great season for the Ducks. They ran through on the Pac-12 conference tournament title, but not enough against the overall number one seed. Remember, Louisville was the number one seed back in 2009 with Patino. They got eliminated in the Elite Eight. So this has gone final. Let's get some instant analysis from you. One thing I was really interested to hear is taking a look at Russ Smith and what he's done. As the moment has gotten bigger, so is his production. He drives Patino equal parts loving and crazy. But hey, when he puts together numbers like this, you can see why this New York City product is a Patino favorite. A lot of love tonight for Russ Smith. The 31 points. He was the catalyst offensively for everything that Louisville wanted to accomplish. Uh, they got out. They started running. They were aggressive. They were attacking. And this is the first time, too, that the Oregon Ducks have been on this stage with Dana Altman. His first attempt at a Sweet 16. I think that's really important to remember because the guy he's going against, Rick Pitino, he's been here so often. He This is old hat for him. He knows exactly what buttons to push. Still, a great season. If you're an Oregon Ducks fan and you're watching tonight's game, a year ahead of schedule. That's what the Oregon Ducks were by getting to this moment, a bright future for them, but for Louisville, an opportunity to get to the Final Four. And moments ago, Rick Pitino on perhaps one of the best players he's ever had in his Louisville backcourts. I sort of had a prod our guys the entire night. We've Unfortunately, Russ has infected our entire team with a ridiculous cold, and uh, all our guys are really sick. And um, at a, it, it took a lot of out of, out of us because Oregon's so good. Um, when Peyton got in foul trouble, Russ had to play way too many minutes, and everybody's coughing and hacking and every time out. And I just, we just had to get our guys through it, and hopefully we'll get better. The only problem is on every time out, Russ is hacking in our faces um, every 30 seconds, just like this. So keep your distance, uh, and you'll all have pneumonia by the morning, like Gorgie and me. <laughs> you gotta love Patino. I mean, what more does Russ Smith need to You're do not for sick, you? Are you? No, no, no. That's okay, why we're keeping a sure. safe distance. He still finds a way to criticize me. So happy to have Smith. He's been an unbelievable presence for them this year. I wanted to go back to something you said. When I asked you who could stop Louisville, clearly not Oregon, but then you said maybe they can stop themselves. Explain that. Well, at times, they, their defense is so great, but it's relying upon their guards making the right decision at the right time. And I, I really think that in this NCAA tournament, they've done a pretty good job managing the pressure of the moment. But as this tournament moves on, you've got to have Smith and Siva playing well together. And tonight, it was Smith. Siva got in foul trouble, picked up two early fouls that really could have come back and haunted Louisville in this game. But instead, they were able to weather the storm, as Coach Patino was just talking about, and were able to move past it. As they get into the next round and then potentially a Final Four, that's where you've got to make sure both your guards are bringing their A game. You cannot take a step back because when they start get deviating from the plan, and forgetting their assignments defensively and then offensively trying to do a little bit too much and the bad Russ Smith comes out, uh, then that's when you start to worry if you're a Cardinal fan. All right, take a look at it from Louisville's standpoint. You've got a team that offensively can light up. Defensively, the pressure D is amazing. Is there any other team in the country that has that combination on both sides well, of the basket. If you're talking about efficiency, then yes, uh, the Florida Gators uh, are number one in both categories when you look at as far as teams that are left in this tournament. Efficiency at the offensive end, efficiency at the defensive end. That's why the Gators are such a dangerous team, of course, later on tonight against Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, this is a squad, though, overall in Florida that has struggled in late moments in games. And they are 0-6 in games that are decided under six points down the stretch of contest. They've got to be really careful that they avoid that situation in this NCAA tournament and hopefully maybe to even tonight. When you're talking about Louisville, everybody knows you got to get a ton out of Siva. You know you got to get a little bit out of Behan and a little bit out of Russ Smith. But who is the X factor for this team? Somebody we don't well, talk about for Rick Pitino's team? Tonight it was Kevin Ware. I, yeah. I, thought, I thought Kevin Ware did an excellent job coming off the bench and being ready to produce. He, he finished with 11 points, 5 of 7 shooting from the floor. Overall as a team, 
Louisville shot the ball extremely well tonight. 54% field goal percentage in this game, and that's that you're going to win a lot of games. When you play defense and have a commitment to defense like Louisville does, and then you shoot better than 53% from the floor, you give yourself a great opportunity to win a game. And the Oregon Ducks, it just came down to they couldn't get enough stops in this game. Talk a little bit about what faces them next, because they're going to probably play, face a team that is nothing like Oregon. Oregon in the Midwest, Louisville facing Pac-12 champs Oregon. First half, Louisville up five. And check out Peyton Siva's pass to Shane Bahena in for the jam. Thread in the needle. Then later, Russ Smith getting in on the action, the thievery, and he's going to take it the other way, splitting the defenders with a little finger roll. And he wasn't done. Second half now. Smith coming away with another steal. And he is going to finish. We'll have more on Smith in a sec second, but he was just on fire. Later, though, Oregon down 10, trying to make a comeback. Dominic Artis going to hit the jumper. He had 12 in the game. Oregon down 54-46. Nine minutes later, nine minutes left. Louisville up 15. Luke Hancock burying his only triple of the game. Then with under five minutes to go, Oregon down only eight. Damon Dotson knocking down the J. Oregon within six, but Louisville holding on to win it as Smith finds Bahena knocking on the back door. Louisville wins it 77-69. Rick Pitino now 11-0 all-time in Sweet 16 games. But Russ Smith, the story of the game is 31 points, tied fifth most in an NCAA tournament game in Louisville history, and is 81 points the first three games most ever in a single tournament in Louisville history. I really enjoyed working with the group. Uh, one of the most enjoyable years I've had uh, working with a group of young men and uh, just disappointed that um, we didn't play a little bit better in that first half. We didn't have it tonight. We really were, and, and it's, it's a tribute to Oregon. Oregon's a great basketball team, one of the best we have played. They're about as well coached as any coach I've seen. They're really, really a well-drilled coach team. And we were short of gas tonight. Without Russ Smith, we couldn't win.